Welcome to our Good Friday Footnotes podcast. This is an important day as we reflect on the death of our Savior on the cross. So we want to provide a resource for you today to mull over and consider as we head into our Good Friday service tonight at Foothill at 6 p.m. So I just want to encourage you to find a quiet place, maybe take a walk, and allow some of these reminders and prayer prompts to inform your worship today. Psalm 41, nine. Even my close friend, whom I trusted, he who shared my bread has lifted up his heel against me. Matthew 26, 20-25 When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful, and began to say to him, one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Let us silently meditate in prayer on the betrayal of Jesus. Isaiah 53, 1-6 Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of the dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hid their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let us silently meditate in prayer on the suffering of Jesus. Some readings from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night I find no rest. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me, they make mouths at me, they wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like the potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs encompass me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Let us silently meditate in prayer on the death and crucifixion of Jesus.
John 19, 38 through 41, followed by a poem entitled Joseph and Nicodemus. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who had earlier come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. What a disheveled heap this bled out bone bag makes, crusted with spit and sweat, entrusted with threats to the two of us. The workman's wiry muscles now slack, as pitiful as they break through the flayed skin. But the blood, it's all gone, tired of flowing, clotted and forgotten at the dirt footer of the flogging pole. And of course that cross. We avert from each other, but we cannot stop our own tears, squeezed out between our eyelids. That should shield us from what we see here. The candle wax pallor, the shamed nakedness we wash and cover first to give the modesty the audience denied. Our towels dipped in the pots we lugged down the stairs. The water pinks now in the lamplight and part by part, limb by limb, we dampen and rub away all the vestiges on the shell of a delivered over spirit. One of the winding cloths rolls below the ledges. We reel it in and wrap his arms from the swaddles of our grizzled forearms. We have grown wrinkles under our tears. The weight is almost beyond our old man's strength we heft and lean, balance and wrap the acrid spices. The confined space brings more tears, more tears. We need not need the water anymore. Jesus was dead. The sacrifice was complete.